Hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully you are enjoying your holiday weekend, uh, getting any last minute habitat projects completed uh, to hopefully be giving your property a much needed rest before the upcoming hunting season. Uh, in today's video, I did wanna talk about one of those projects, one of the more important things that you need to make sure that you have ho hopefully already addressed, but if you haven't, then you might want to uh, you know, pencil in some time, some evenings uh, relatively quickly here to make sure that you do have this completed and that's making sure that you have clean access to and from your stand locations. Making sure that you can get to and from your stand locations with a lower probability of spooking deer is one of the most important things that you need to make sure that you have taken care of for your property. Everything that we're doing on our properties, uh, whether that's cutting bedding areas, installing food plots, you know, carving trails, mock scrapes, water holes, screenings, you know, tree plantings, you know, all of this is done to try to create more predictable, consistent daylight deer movement on our property. And although there are several things that can mess that up, you know, one of the big ones is spooking deer when you're trying to get to or from your stand locations. So again, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about access and three things that we like to make sure that we are considering when installing our access routes on our property. And the first one that I wanna to touch on is how we're accessing our properties. And in order to do that, we kinda of gotta figure out you know, how we're setting up our properties. And while every property will be set up a little bit differently with how you're you know, structuring the habitat improvements, all of the habitat improvements that we're putting in on our property is to encourage deer movement within our property borders. So we are gonna have deer that are gonna be you know, coming on and off the properties you know, to and from the neighbors, but we're not gonna be encouraging that. What we're trying to encourage on our property is deer movement within our property borders. So the, the bedding areas that we create, you know, the food plots that we put in, the, the deer trails that we carve through, that is to encourage movement within our property borders. And we also wanna make sure that the deer that are using those habitat improvements within the interior of our property have a false sense of security. And, and if we're walking down the middle of our property through those habitat improvements to get to our stand locations, we're gonna be educating deer uh, to the fact that they're being hunted. We're gonna be applying pressure to our property. Those deer are no longer gonna have a false sense of security. They're gonna be highly pressured. And if this continues to happen, there's a good chance that those deer are gonna stop using your property during daylight and you're only gonna see nocturnal movement on your trail cameras. So that is what we do not want to do. We do not want to educate the deer herd on our property by accessing our stand locations right through the middle of the habitat improvements. Instead, we want to try to go around the habitat improvements. And in this case, in a lot of cases, that means accessing around the outside of the property, you know, as close to the perimeter as you can. And I don't know if you can see next to me here, I think you can, uh, I have a chalk line here that I used after I got the property surveyed that I, I ran from uh, post to post to make sure that I knew exactly where my property line was. And so what I did is I made an access path right along the property border. Now, for the most part, this runs right along this chalk line. Every once in a while, you do see it kind of kick in a little bit just because there was a, a, a lot of downed trees right there. And, and instead of having to cut a trail through those down trees. I just kind of jogged around it a little bit. So I'm not going really far in. I'm, I might have gone uh, five yards in and then got right back to the property line. So this access trail that was created right on the property line gives me an easy way to get around my entire property. So depending on the wind direction, you know, what stand that I'm gonna hunt that particular day, you know, this trail can get me there. So I, I can walk along the edge of my property, the perimeter of my property, without spooking deer on the interior, walk along the edge and cut into stand locations to hunt those deer that are using the improvements on the interior of the property. The second thing that I wanted to touch on in today's video as it relates to access is making sure that you remain hidden as you're making your way to and from your stand locations with screening. Even if you're getting to and from your stand locations along the perimeter of your property or, or through a non-deer area, you need to make sure that you're remaining hidden. If you're walking along your access path, but you can see uh, into the area that the deer are gonna be using, like uh, you can see a food plot clear as day, or you can see into a bedding area. You know, that area needs to be screened off. Just like we don't wanna be walking through our habitat improvements on the property to basically let the deer know that they're being hunted, we also do not wanna be walking through an area 
that exposes ourselves to the deer movement because it's not screened appropriately. When accessing your property, you know, getting to and from your stand locations, you can actually get pretty close to deer without them knowing that you're there. As long as you're taking wind into consideration, you're blowing your scent off the property, you're quiet while you're walking to and from your stand locations, and that trail is screened. On our previous property down in Barry County, where most of these videos were filmed, I was able to get pretty close to deer while accessing different stand locations. I think that on multiple occasions, I was able to get within 50 yards of deer without them knowing that I was there. And to be honest, I didn't know that they were there either. It wasn't until I climbed up in the stand, sat down, got, got situated that I would see a deer kind of stand up out of a bedding area. It's like, wow, that, that deer was right there. And neither one of us knew that the other one was there. And that's because you, you're keeping wind into consideration. You have you know, clean, quiet access, and the area that you're approaching from is screened off. And unfortunately with screening, you know, th this is something that needed to be taken care of earlier. You know, Labor Day weekend, we just don't have enough time to establish a, a good enough screen to hide your movement. And if this sounds like you, maybe just take this season to evaluate which areas of your access need to be screened off. And again, if there's ever an area along your access trail that you can look into the deer movement, that's an area that needs to be screened off. And I have areas that I, I didn't get to this year that I'm on my access path, I look over and say, like, ooh, I can see that food plot over there. That's an area that needs to be screened off in the future. So just make note of it and then get to it, you know, as soon as you can next habitat season. And there's a lot of great screens out there, guys. It really just kind of depends on your situation. You know, what are you trying to screen off? You can go with you know, conifer planting. You can do a hinge cut screen, switchgrass. If you're looking for an annual, Northwoods Whitetail Cells, an awesome uh, plot screen, uh, miscanthus grass. There, there's a lot of different screens that you can install to hide your movement. And finally, guys, the third thing that I wanna to touch on in today's video is making sure that you're staying as quiet as possible when walking to and from your stand locations. We, we kind of touched on scent with the first point with trying to access around the perimeter of your property, you know, you know, not through the middle, you know, blowing your scent off to the outside away from your property. We touched on sight with screening, making sure that your access trail is screened off so you do not see into the deer movement. And finally, we wanna make sure that we're taking sound into consideration. We do not want to be spooking deer by snapping a bunch of sticks while walking to and from our stand locations. And this is where the actual creation of the access trail comes in. We, we kind of nailed down the route with point number one, but now we need to actually install the access trail. And, and really what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to make a, a trail that I can walk down without making a lot of noise or touch anything. My process for creating the access trail is fairly simple. You know, once I have my route established, and most of the time, again, it's right down the property border, I'm just gonna walk that with my chainsaw and remove any logs or, or larger sticks you know, out of the way so that I can get through that area with my riding lawnmower. Now, once I have all the, the bigger debris, you know, sticks, logs, rocks out of there, then I'm just dropping the deck on my mower and I'm driving uh, down the path a couple times to kind of shoot most of that debris off to the side. Uh, once I've driven down it with my lawnmower a couple times, then I'm gonna take my leaf blower and then I'm gonna walk down the trail with my leaf blower to get everything else off the path. So all those little sticks, all the leaves, anything like that is gonna be blown off to the side. And then I'm, I'm basically left with this. Uh, this was uh, two passes with the lawnmower and then I walked down it with the leaf blower and now I have a, a bare dirt trail that I can walk up and down without making any noise. I also mentioned that I don't wanna to touch anything along the way, and that's because I don't wanna be leaving any scent behind. So it's not only important to make sure you have a quiet access path, it's also important to make sure that you don't have any branches or anything growing into your access path that you might you know, bump into along the way. Deer will walk this trail every once in a while. It's a nice path, they're gonna walk it, and you just wanna make sure that when they do, that there's a very low probability that they're gonna know that you were on that trail because you were touching everything along the way. If you do happen to have branches that are coming into your access trail, you know, I had a couple on, the, on each side here, you know, just cut them back. You just wanna make sure that you're able to get up and down this trail without touching anything. 
Also in other areas of this trail, not necessarily this section here, because uh, this is mainly just dirt, but I have other areas of the trail that have more weeds and grasses growing. And so although I did cut that lower with the mower, I'm gonna be hitting it uh, with herbicide as well to make sure that nothing new grows fr from now until the start of the season. But that's basically all that I'm doing when creating this perimeter access trail. Uh, again, this runs along the outside of my entire property. And I also have trails that look just like this that cut into the different stand locations. Before we wrap this one up, I will answer one of the questions that I, I know we're gonna get. And that's, what do we do when all the leaves fall down in late October, early November? And that's absolutely nothing. I'm not gonna be putting extra pressure on my property to come back here and blow the leaves off my access trail. All the work that we're doing up until this point, you know, clearing the access trail off, removing all the sticks, making sure that we don't have anything coming into our access trail, you know, that, that's the biggest thing that you need to worry about. Yes, once all those leaves come down, especially on a cold morning, you will be making more noise walking to and from your stands. Just, just make sure that you're not in a hurry, take your time and just walk slow because you can be pretty quiet walking over leaves. The biggest thing is, is you're not stepping on a bunch of sticks, you know, snapping those twigs at, at the same time. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video on access. Again, hopefully this is something that you have already installed on your property. If not, just try to make sure that you block off a, a couple nights uh, in the next couple days here or in the next week to, to get this addressed on your property. If you do have any questions on access or, or anything at all, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as we can, and we'll see you guys in the next video.